Hey friends, so what you're about to watch is an experiment. Our Next Gen Ministry team last spring sat down on a retreat and talked a lot about a, a bunch of topics. It's from what we've done in the past, what we should do in the future. And one of the things that became really clear to a couple of our members, myself included, was that we needed to strengthen our communications. And to that end, two of our ministry, me ministry team members, Amy Grello, who serves at Bower Hill, and Ryan Pixton, who serves at Hampton, felt pretty passionate about strengthening up our newsletter. Uh, and as the one who's been responsible for putting the newsletter together in the past, I was all about it. And I was really excited about some of their ideas. And so if you notice in September, you got the first newsletter that actually had some structure to it. It was broken down into three parts and it featured um, an article about like doing mission trips and long term and service projects and things like that. This is the second thing that we're doing and that is we're adding a video component. Uh, so what you're going to see here is a 10 minute conversation roughly about confirmation in which hosted by Jason Fryer featuring Ryan and Amy um, just talking about three main questions around confirmation. Why do we do it? How do you involve the congregation? How do you keep Jesus at the center? We know that there is some stuff that as we do this again, we need to improve on. Um, there's some production quality stuff that I see, given the nerd I am, I'm like, oh, we got to fix that before next time. But here's what I want you to know. We're open to, to, we're definitely open to feedback, but we're really looking for feedback on two things. Number one is, are there other topics that, that you think would be helpful to hear a conversation about? And do you have passion, do, do you have something that you're passionate about sharing, an idea that, that, that you've done that you want to share with, share with other people? This is one of the mediums that we have in mind for those types of things. If you've got other ideas, feedback on length and format and things like that, we're open to hearing all of that. Um, but just know, like, this is an experiment, it's a first try, and we really welcome your feedback. So without any, without further ado, I want to hand it over to Jason, Ryan, and Amy for our conversation about confirmation. Enjoy. Uh, well, welcome to a new video series that we're trying to do, um, where we're trying to give practical ministry things. Uh, normally, Amy and I are going to be interviewing someone, but we've flipped the scripts for this, uh, where we're actually going to let... Jay do the interviewing and we've decided on the topic of confirmation because the video that you hopefully you saw talks a lot about confirmation that Jay did at the Better Than Average. So I'm going to hand the mic over to you. Which I totally remember that teaching from Better Than Average, but hi everybody, good to see you. So, so here's question one, very off the top, why do you do confirmation in your churches? Or even how would your church answer that question? Why do we do confirmation? And obviously not using the answer that you probably gave of the Book of Order tells us we have Well, to. yeah, there's that. Yeah. That. yeah. Um, I would say the reason we do confirmation is because we want the young kids to get plugged into the life of the church. Mm. Um, in some ways, I've thought about this because I'm also in charge of our new member class. Uh huh. And so I'm almost like, wow, you could just do the new member class and become a member. Um, but I've realized confirmation, we do it so they've got this year to kind of explore what it means and to hopefully be plugged in by the end. Yeah. Yeah. And at the most basic level for me, in our church, I'm guessing it's our entire tradition, but in our tradition, we baptize babies. So we have parent figures sort of committing to the importance of church and raising their child in the church. I, my understanding is that confirmation asks the youth to renew that that vow just to say is this important enough that this is how i want to how, how i want to spend my time and, and operate and so it's it's giving the kids the information that they need in order to make that decision um one of the interesting things and i guess you guys could say this like it doesn't lead to everybody saying yes and, and making that decision to confirm yeah. and that's okay and, and I think one of the things that's beautiful about confirmation is we don't um, most churches at least from my experience are completely okay with the decision that the youth makes so this is not something where you're rated on did I get a hundred percent or is higher did better it's kind of like yeah meet the kids where they are and walk them through this this decision which i think is a really cool um part of conference yeah H how do you include the congregation in your different programs right i think everybody tackles this a little differently like some do mentorship some do uh you know uh, I, I, don't, I don't even know like invite the session into the confirmation class. what do you guys what do you guys work through uh well so when i was an intern 
we started with mentors. And so I've kind of always lived under this idea of mentorship. Um, and I even know that like when this goes well, like it did for my wife, she actually is still talking to mm. her confirmation mentor. And this is like years and years later. Yeah. Um, but what I've learned is, especially with child protection policies and that sort of stuff, you got to really think about this because if it's yeah. a one-on-one -on -one relationship and you're just saying, hey, go be alone, <laughs> like, wait, and right. hang on, all kinds of problems. Um, and so we've actually shifted where, and I, and I think it's actually good for the youth too, because they've got like a buddy, um, where I've like paired up kids or done a trio, depending upon how many we have, and they are assigned to one adult of the same gender. Yeah. Um, and so you've already kind of got a built in, like if you meet in a coffee shop with those three people, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. We have um, this, so our church doesn't do confirmation every single year because we don't have them, um, the volume of children that we need to, to make it good discussion. So the years that we, we do confirmation, um, we have tried the one-on-one -on -one mentor in the past. We typically don't have enough to even make a group mentor situation. So I think the way we worked around um, not the last time we did the one-on-one -on -one mentor, it felt stale. The kids did not like it. We got feedback from the group. It wasn't meaningful relationships weren't developed. I think it was just the frequency that we asked the mentors to meet with the youth was once a month. It wasn't enough to build right. that relationship. So um, this time around, we uh, we did a asked the church because when we baptize children, we ask the congregation to be there and to be present and helping to bring the kids up. We said we basically want you to. Um, F do that in a very meaningful way by attending these potluck dinners. So mm -hmm. we ended up doing um, monthly potluck dinners with the confirmation class. We'd ask each confirmant to sit at different tables and then fill in with church members and then give a list of questions about faith, just, just open-ended questions. Um, and then that dinner would happen right before we met as a confirmation class. So then yeah. the confirmants would share what they learned from the people at their table. So it was sort of a way of fostering community and, and asking the entire congregation to support the confirmants. Um, it was a really cool thing. I feel like it helped to um, prioritize or maybe give value to intergenerational ministry in a little different way in our, in our congregation and has been very positive. So I mean, yeah, I, I I think I think everybody has like the horror stories around confirmation, like those kids that are new to the to the thing. I had a kid ask at the beginning of a confirmation class once, "What is Easter?" I was like, "Oh, so we are, we are the <laughs> right, we, yeah, we, we are basic we foundation," and they they went on to do you know to do the whole thing and learn a whole bunch. But I think the one I've heard this from a couple kids in our in our confirmation process that like. They grew up going to Sunday school and getting those lessons and all those things. But this is where, for a lot of kids, Jesus gets real, right? Yeah. Like, they, like my, I understand this in a new, not just headspace way, but a heart space way, right? And, and part of why you connect flower beds and, and serve in Sunday school. So, I mean, like, we joked at the beginning of the video that, like, the reason you do it, the why, is because the Book of Order says so. But I think there is this inherent, like, this is where Jesus gets real for a lot of kids. So how do you balance all the requirements of that process of, you know, confirmation, becoming a new member, and making Jesus more real for kids? That's an excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> I broke out the light ones for this, yeah. Um, so I think Jesus gets real as they start to see how Jesus is working in the church. Mm. Um, and so I've even made some changes with this year's confirmation class. Uh, something that I'd actually done when I was at the previous church a little bit and now balancing with what, what we do here, where I want them to understand all the different ministries that the church is doing. Because I'm realizing that like, maybe this kid's gonna find Jesus and it's gonna become real in that ministry. Maybe this kid, this ministry, this. And so like we've got six committees that meet monthly we got eight total, but like the six. And, and so like, I'm trying to get them to figure out, okay, what is this worship committee about? Yeah. What is this outreach committee about? What is the mission committee about? Um, and getting them to learn some of those things. Um, 
we still have a general, they've got to do so many activity points, which is like, I did a service project, I attended worship, I did this, but I've even, I haven't done it yet, but I've thought maybe I need to have a few standalone things like they are required to do a mission project or they're required to do this sort of a thing so they still get some of those other things for sure and it's not just this oh I could do this one thing and do nothing else 50 times yeah 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 and we have we definitely um, have not had success like requiring if, if we if we make too many requirements and maybe we're too lax but like if we make too many requirements like you must come to all these classes and you must do this you can't get confirmed so it just didn't feel right to us so we we have sort of lay out like here's the here's the class schedule make every attempt that you can in advance if you can't be there we send information home to the parents and then ask the parents to review the information with the kid and you know ask us if they have questions or things yeah, it's so interesting. I mean, it's, we could talk about this forever. Um, and I'm glad you guys welcomed the bearded weirdo to come talk with y'all. But um, <laughs> oh. you got a whole newsletter in front of you to, to look through some of this stuff. And by the way, I'm not on the committee anymore, but I feel like I can say this. There's a whole committee called NextGen that's here to help with this kind of stuff. So if we didn't touch on something or if the better and average didn't touch on something, reach out, call us, email us. Uh, we'll walk together through it. So confirmation is scary, but you don't have to do it alone. It's good fun. Right, and this is another maybe good time to plug our band app. Mm. Um, so the Next Gen Committee has an app that we use called Band, um, and if you get onto our band, you can post comments and say, "Hey, I'd love to get a copy of, you know, the curriculum, the confirmation right. curriculum that Ryan was talking about, or give me the name of that, you know, the whatever Amy's using." So if you would like to. Um, connect with others in the next gen ministry band app is a great way to do it um, so that you can get follow-up information for what you need